to its name perfectly. Yeah. Um, this piece is titled Dawn's Highway, and it starts with an epigraph from the song Peace Rock by the Doors. It says, Indians scattered on Dawn's Highway, bleeding, ghosts crowd the young child's fragile eggshell mind. The cars inch slowly along the crowded desert highway, headlights dotting the landscape for miles ahead. The sun was barely cresting the horizon on the reservation. It was a brisk morning before the dry New Mexico heat would begin to roast the land. A curious boy, about five, peered out the square window of his father's station wagon. His grandmother sat in the front, speculating about the slow traffic as their vehicle came to a stop. The child pressed his nose against the glass to get a better view of a scorpion that was scuttling across the, stand, across the sand. He studied its mighty pinchers and imagined how it would catch its prey. The station wagon began to crawl forward again, and the boy's eyes diverted to the wreckage ahead, the culprit of the congestion. The truck lay on its side, the metal mangled and torn. Contents from the bed of the pickup lay scattered in the sand, remnants of the wreckage in a man's life. As the procession of cars crept past the accident, the victim of the crash came into sight. The child's father and grandmother kept their eyes on the road, a reverence toward the stranger laying in the sand, but the boy could not redirect his eyes. The scene demanded his attention and held his gaze. He could not look away. The victim was a native and lay still on the shoulder of the road, his black braid glistening in the rising sun. He had been dead for nearly 20 minutes now, his corpse resting in a pool of blood that had spilled across the highway. And while his body had no pulse, his spirit was frantically dancing in the sand, unable to rest, unseen by all, but felt by one. The boy could tell he was being watched, yet unsure by what. He sensed an energy and presence of something greater, something powerful. His eyes were wide in wonder and curiosity as he looked out the window, oddly perverse emotions for a child to experience when viewing death, a voyeur of his own kind. He continued to study the scene, searching for the thing that had pulled him in, still unaware that this thing was not something you sense with your eyes. And then he felt it, a tingling sensation that started in his toes and crept up to his head, spreading out to each fingertip. Time began to slow, seconds felt like hours, and the muffled conversation from the front of the station wagon slipped away. The only noise he could hear now was a slow and steady drumbeat getting closer and louder. The invisible drum's cadence became nearly unbearable as it echoed in his head, and then it stopped. The boy shivered as he felt cold air all around him, and while his skin felt cool inside, there were flames. The fire inside raged, consuming the oxygen in his lungs, then just as suddenly, his body felt open, momentarily empty. The fire escaped and a gust of wind rushed into his chest. The emptiness the child felt seconds before was abruptly replaced with overcrowding. He could sense that something or someone had invaded him. He felt too small to accommodate its magnitude. And while his body felt undersized for the job, his fragile eggshell mind was a blank canvas. There were no walls to limit reality. He was open and malleable young and willing to accept and become one with the unknown. That day, two spirits fused, and a medicine man was born. The rock shaman, the lizard king, the spirit of Jim Morrison. Woo! Got nothing on that one, Eddie? <laughs> I got nothing. Okay. I'm just trying to decipher writing. Okay, I got it, I got it. 8.9, 8.9, and 9.3.